Hello everyone, today in this video we will fight against the atmosphere of our world around us and this time we will think uh, what are the real functions of history. So first that uh, comes to the mind of people is that history is uh, telling the story about the past and investigating the past. Actually, what really happened in the past? Yes, this is good definition. So we can say that the first function of history itself is just to investigate the past and gain as, mu as much as possible uh, knowledge about uh, this what happened and to make this knowledge as accurate as possible on the basis of available sources of different types. Writing sources, traditional uh, so uh, sources like legends, archaeological artifacts and also uh, intellect and imagination of experienced historian can also improve our understanding of the past and thanks to the good analysis and uh, the proper conclusions that can be made uh, despite some limitations of our source material about the past we can overcome some limitations and know some aspects of our past better so this is the uh, uh, first function of history, gaining knowledge about the past. Second function of history is, as already ancient historians said, it's educational function, that you educate population by presenting them history and using the historical events as examples uh, to illustrate that some behaviors are more profitable for people as individuals and people as societies and some behaviors are uh, less profitable, even very harmful for either societies and individuals. So uh, the second function is of course education with respect to morality and social behavior and of course some justification of uh, human nature and also our interactions between us as people and between us and environment. So second function is educational function. Third function is of course if historian is good and the history of a book written by him about some events uh, is regarded to be good. Uh, there is also a third function this story needs this book needs to have. And I, I will uh, tell you what I really uh, mean. Now I mean that uh, despite uh, delivering us the best knowledge possible about the past, this is first, first function, educational function, showing, giving us example from the uh, past to show us which behaviors are good to us and which behaviors are bad to us. So despite educational and um, gaining knowledge functions, there is also a third function, that is entertaining the reader. Because when historian presents us the facts and shows us also uh, moral lessons that come from these uh, events of the past, if he is a good writer, he can also entertain us at the same time by presenting his, his events with good examples and with sense of humor with nice comparisons or simply with beautiful and funny language and the perfect history contains perfect history books contains all of these three elements in it the best historians i advise you to read are of course edward gibbon he is the fall uh, the decline and fall of the roman empire uh, of course stephen Runciman with his the history of the crusades Mm, of course, Polish theoretician of civilizations, Felix Konieczny, his English counterpart, counterpart Arnold Toynbee, uh, also Oswald Spengler. Despite the fact Oswald Spengler uh, book, uh, books do not have this third element, uh, they don't have sense of humor, the same like books by uh, Hans Delbrück, because Hans Delbrück, the father of the military history, very great uh, historian, his analysis and uh, conclusions 
also presentation of the uh, consequences of the events and all connections between the reasons and um, the consequences all perfectly logically connected and uh, perfectly presented in terms of military and political history one can take many uh, conclusions with respect to morality on, and human nature from the book of Hans Delbrück, the father of the modern military history, but uh, he has the same problem why the, why the books of Spengler and Delbrück are not perfect, because they do not contain third element. <sighs> These authors were German and, say, and the term German sense of humor is already a joke itself because somehow Germans do not have sense of humor, at least they are not famous from it. So books by German historians, uh, very good ones, have these uh, two first elements uh, mastered. So uh, investigation for the fact, using the sources in the best possible way to extract the knowledge about the past in the best way possible, and also um, very often we get beautiful analyses uh, from which we can gain education about our life and about people themselves and about interaction of people and environment. But we do not get this third part that is also important, uh, in my opinion, this entertaining part uh, to give uh, the joy to the reader. Germans somehow cannot do it because they do not have sense of humor. That's why uh, despite the fact that these books by Oswald uh, Spengler and Hans Delbrück are very good, these books, they are not perfect like the books of Gibbon, Ranciman, uh, Toynbee, Konechny and many, many other historians uh, who, whose works I like because somehow Germans do not have enough sense of humor. Uh, so we know what are the three main functions of history. I hope I convince you to that and encourage you to read more history and learn more about ourselves, the interactions between us and the interactions between us people and the world around us. This is History 4. All the best. Have a nice day. Bye.